Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. This is your personal psychedelic neuroscientist, Manesh Kuren. In case you're new to the channel, I'm your tour guide into the complex and fascinating world of psychedelic research. Today's topic, how to best integrate your psychedelic journey. But before we get into exploring some neuroscience-based suggestions on optimal psychedelic integration, a quick few words on the sponsor of today's video, Psydelves. Psydelves are digital collectibles that let users create their own custom trips and also give them access to a suite of utilities for people interested in psychedelics. Go check out their website, psydelve.com, to learn more. Thank you, Psydelve, for sponsoring today's video. All right, so you may be thinking, what exactly is psychedelic integration? I define integration as the process of deriving specific and concrete actions from the insights gained during a psychedelic experience and integrating them into your day-to-day -day life with the goal of creating lasting positive changes in your thinking and behavior. This whole concept hinges on the important fact that psychedelics do not do the work for you. They can open the door and even give you a push through it, but then it's all on you to stay true to your highest realizations and real eyes them in your life. Otherwise, all of those elevated states will just fade away into memory. Imagine this, you just had an intense, profound, and reality-shattering psychedelic journey where you might have drifted in and out of a blissful union with all of creation, had a nice cry, explored long-forgotten memories, and gained some new insights and perspectives on your life and your relationships. And now it's the next day and you're waking up and you're wondering, one, what the f just even happened and two what am I gonna do with all that so the first thing you're gonna want to do is get your laptop or notebook and just write down anything and everything that comes to mind about your experience at this stage forget about trying to make sense of it or even trying to create some kind of story behind it just go full stream of consciousness style and just get it all out in whatever order it comes out the important thing here is to try and articulate everything you remember in as much detail as possible what did you see visually how did it make you feel what memories came up did you have any emotional releases? If so, what was happening when they occurred? What occupied your thoughts during the journey? Did you transcend space-time and your sense of being an individual altogether? How did that feel? What did that bring up for you? And so on. While you're doing this, you're not going to remember everything about your experience and that's totally fine. The fact that you remembered certain aspects and didn't remember others, it's itself something that's interesting and something to reflect on. And you might want to take special note of all the things that stick out the most in your memory. Now, after you've gone through your experiences and feel like you've gotten all the main things down, you're going to next do your best to make sense of all of it by relating it to your life and personal history. This is where working with a therapist or integration specialist can be extremely helpful, but you can also just go about this alone. Something to keep in mind when you're trying to make sense of your psychedelic experience is that the experience often speaks through metaphors and symbols, similar to dreams. The process of interpreting your psychedelic experience can therefore actually be very similar to how you would go about interpreting a dream. Although some things might have a very literal interpretation, many don't. You really want to try to read between the lines and figure out whether the visuals you had or the random lines of thought that popped in your head have some kind of symbolic meaning that either relates to your life or just the culture at large. Does what you experienced relate to your relationship dynamics with friends and loved ones? Are they somehow an articulation of your tendencies in your work or your day-to-day -day habits? Are they an exaggerated representation of your perspective of yourself or of other people or of the world? And did your experiences include themes from familiar or even distant cultures or religions? Remember, although much of your experience might seem totally bizarre, crazy, and random, everything you experienced came from inside of you. The word psychedelic itself literally means mind manifesting, a word that highlights how these drugs reveal parts of your mind that are usually hidden and behind the scenes. And let's just put thoughts about the collective unconscious to the side for now. I do also want to highlight here though that it's also very common to have very straight up and literal personal insights and new perspectives during your experience. And these are super important to mark down as well. While making sense of your experience in this way, it can be helpful to create some kind of narrative or story that traces the arc of your trip. It might be helpful to think of your experience as some kind of crazy movie. What are the different scenes and their themes? How are they connected if they are at all? How do things progress over time and what may have influenced this progression? These kinds of open-ended questions can really help facilitate the meaning making process. Overall, I hope you can see how creating a sort of mind map based on dominant themes or phases of your experience 
can be really useful. And remember that this whole process is fundamentally creative and interpretive. There are no right or wrong answers. Now, once you've got it all laid out, you're gonna wanna make things as concrete and actionable as possible. You wanna go from these insights and perspective shifts to very specific things that you wanna implement and change in your life. These could be new ways you want to relate to others, habits you wanna let go of, new ones you wanna take on, new perspectives you wanna keep in mind, and so on. What I would suggest doing is, based on your own unique meaning-making process, describe in very concrete terms one to three things that you want to change in your behavior or thinking moving forward and be as specific as possible so you can very clearly know whether you're doing them or not remember what gets measured gets managed you might be hearing this and just think that this is all overkill and is not really necessary there really seems to be this belief that having a profound experience and gaining insights are themselves enough to create lasting change kind of like okay I've gotten the message I've been transformed I'll never be the same again. Yeah, unfortunately, your brain is a tough mother and as strong as this change might seem in the days or even weeks after an experience, your brain will naturally begin to pull you back into your old patterns and ways of being. It's critical that you take conscious and deliberate actions to maintain the change and that you also work to understand how you can improve on the changes you've already implemented. It's an ongoing, protracted, lifelong process. This is where an understanding of neuroplasticity can be really helpful. I've covered neuroplasticity in detail in a previous video, so make sure to go check that out. An understanding of neuroplasticity and optimal psychedelic integration really go hand in hand. The thing with the brain is that the connections between brain cells, aka neurons, are strengthened based on how much they fire together. The well-known saying in neuroscience is neurons that fire together, wire together. And our habitual patterns of thinking and behaving all have their basis in patterns of connections between between neurons that have been deeply encoded through repetition. When you do something over and over again, it becomes basically automatic. And this is because the neural circuits underlying that behavior have been made really strong. For example, you might remember a time, maybe you don't, where you had total conscious control over whether you opened your phone and went to take a look at TikTok or Instagram. But that didn't last very long because as you did it more and more, it became more and more automated. And so now you might find yourself all of a sudden scrolling through your feed without even remembering when you picked up your phone. I mean, it happens to all of us. And this is the power of your brain to create automatic behaviors, aka habits. Every action you take, like scrolling on TikTok, is either strengthening a good habit or strengthening a bad habit. There are no mm. neutral actions. You're literally molding your brain with everything you do, kind of like it's Play-Doh, which I've covered in my neuroplasticity video linked down below. And the critical part of all this is that the longer you've done something for, the harder it is to escape it. So even if you had a transformative psychedelic experience that was full of insights and all the rest, your brain is naturally going to fall back into those old neural connections, unless you're going to be putting in consistent effort effort to strengthen the new ones and not actively feed the old one. The goal of integration is to make the actions and ways of thinking that make up your desired or higher self your new normal. And to do this, you need to get neuroplasticity to work for you rather than against you. And this requires a lot of persistence and conscious effort. Changing is not easy, as we all know. Fortunately for you, there's a really helpful framework called the Psychological Flexibility Model, which serves as an informative way to conceptualize what it takes to maximize psychedelic integration and encode new behaviors in a lasting way. The Psychological Flexibility Model is a core part of a type of therapy called Acceptance and Commitment Therapy, or ACT, which is very commonly paired with psychedelics in psychedelic-assisted psychotherapy. This model defines psychological flexibility as the ability to adaptively respond to the demands of the present moment and act in accordance with one's values. It consists of six distinct factors which are grouped into two categories that might sound pretty familiar to you. Mindfulness components and action components. Let's walk through all these starting with the mindfulness component. Number one, contact with the present moment. This is pretty self-explanatory. You want to be in the here and now and aware of what is happening in the current moment you're in. You need to be sensitive to the demands of the present moment and attentive to what it calls for. Number two, acceptance. This refers to being able to accept accept and sit with whatever sensations, feelings, and thoughts are currently happening. It means not trying to avoid them or rationalize them or even label them as good or bad, but rather to breathe deeply into them and feeling them as they are, allowing them to flow through you. Number three, cognitive diffusion. This refers to defusing yourself from your thoughts, which basically means creating some internal distance between you and your thoughts and seeing them as suggestions and not some kind of ultimate truth. You consider your thoughts and pay attention to them, but you don't automatically listen to them or react to them. Number four, self as context. This factor means acknowledging that your identity is a lens through which you see the world, but is 
not fundamentally you. Recognizing that yourself is a kind of filter with its own limitations and biases. Similar to cognitive diffusion, this is a kind of ego diffusion, a reduced identification with who you think you are. Next, we have the action component. So number five is values. This refers to the need to be very clear on what you value and find important. Your values guide and determine how you respond to the events in your life. In order to be authentic and aligned with your higher self, you need to be clear on where you stand on things. And ultimately, what you choose to integrate based on your psychedelic experience is directly related to what you value. It's important to be very clear on this and extremely valuable to be as explicit as possible. And number six, the last one is committed action. So once all the other factors are present, the last factor is to be committed to acting in accordance with your values. Now that you're present, connected to your feelings, and have created a kind of self-aware internal spaciousness, you can now consciously and deliberately act in a way that most aligns with you. This is where you'll be consciously engaging in the new behaviors and ways of thinking that you derive from your psychedelic experience. As you can probably see, these six factors set you up really well to know when you're acting from unconscious programs that are out of tune with your values in the present moment and help you to reconnect with yourself and act in a way that supports the person you want to be. Mindfulness is an essential component here because if you're not aware of your habitual thoughts and behaviors in the moment, how can you change them? And I know mindfulness is this kind of almost cliche buzzword these days, but I hope you understand that developing a mindfulness meditation practice is one of the most valuable things you can do to support real change and transformation in your life. All in all, the psychological flexibility model is an extremely useful framework in helping you encode new neural circuits after your psychedelic experience in order to support lasting change in your thoughts and actions. As you can tell based on what I've discussed, psychedelic integration is a very person-specific process. The insights that emerge from your meaning-making process and what actions support your greatest insights are going to be very specific to you. That said, frameworks such as the psychological flexibility model and practices such as mindfulness can support whatever form your integration takes. In the end, you need to be able to consciously and deliberately overwrite your old tendencies and create new ones by leveraging neuroplasticity and the properties of how new neural connections form. The way I frame things here in this video is consistent with how integration is conducted in the psilocybin for depression clinical trials at Imperial College London in accordance with the accept, connect, embody or ACE model of psychedelic therapy. There are of course alternatives out there which defer in their specifics but this general process that I've outlined here is pretty common across approaches. If you want to nerd out on these alternatives and the broad variety of practices that have been associated with psychedelic integration, I provided a link to a great research paper below. All right, that's it for today. If you found this video useful, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, smash that like button, and make sure to also ring the little notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. And if you think this video will be useful for anybody else you know, please share it as well. It's really important to get this kind of knowledge out there. And with that, this is your personal psychedelic neuroscientist, Manesh Gurren, signing off. Until next time.